What's up Outliers? Welcome to another follow along mobility video. Today we're going to be focusing on the ankles, the knees, and inevitably actually the hips a little bit because we can't talk about the knee health without talking about our hip health. Big reason behind this is because in the body we have a system of mobile joints and stable joints. So ankle is a very mobile joint, lots of ranges of motion. The knee is a stable joint and then the hip is a mobile joint. So mobile, stable, mobile, and then actually going up the spine does the same thing. However, what we're really looking at is if the hip joint becomes too stable because it is tight, doesn't have the range of motion, something is going to have to compensate, be it the lumbar spine, which is a stable, might have to become a little bit more mobile. That's not great. Or the knee, which is a stable joint, has to become more mobile which is also not great. So if we're talking about knee health, we also need to talk about our hips and make sure that the range of motion in our hips is actually being assessed to aid in the functioning of this system that we have in the body of the mobile stables. So first thing is very simple, easy. We're actually going to stretch out the quadricep and not just the quad itself, but more specifically focusing on these lower vastus muscles. We have the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius, which make up three of the four quad muscles. And then also get a little bit of a stretch up towards the hip area, which is gonna be great for those like hip flexor muscles. So um, pretty simple, easy thing to get started with here. This is a quad stretch, a runner's quad stretch. All we're gonna do is pull that leg behind and also, Let's involve that ankle a little bit in that big planar flexion, which is great. So with this position, this is gonna be really dependent upon the person, of course, right? So if you're pretty tight, this might not work well for you. Um, but we want to come down and lean. You can see my knees wanting to lift up, so this is pretty tight. I don't really need to go any further uh, backwards with this stretch, um, but I do wanna focus on contracting this glute because glute is a hip um, extensor. So if I contract it, I can actually help to stretch out those hip flexors because they're agonist, antagonist, or opposite opposing muscle groups. So I'm just gonna flex that glute while in this position and I'm just gonna hang out. Now, if this is too extreme for you, of course you can come up. If you need something in between, you could use like a yoga block. So nice deep breaths in the position, just getting a stretch gonna feel different for everyone. If this is your limiting factor, the plantar flexion, if this is a big stretch, great, we're doing uh, knees and ankles, remember. So we're gonna switch it up, so we're gonna pop that leg out, bring the other one back, and I can already tell this one's actually really tight. So this is gonna feel good to do. So static stretching, like prescription-wise, the studies really talk about it being um, for every muscle group, 300 seconds a week, you know, which is, you know, five minutes a week of stretching on a muscle group to aid in um, better flexibility of it. But at the end of the day, you need to do what, for one, is best for you, what feels best, what works best, and for two, you need to make sure that um, you're just moving a lot more than being stationary, and that will help with tight muscles a ton too. But since we're here doing a stretching mobility video, this is our time to focus on stretching and um, helping those muscles gain a little more flexibility. So remember, we're contracting that glute to help facilitate better hip flexor stretching. And the hip flexors are also a muscle complex, not just a uh, single muscle. Uh, the psoas is the most commonly known hip flexor muscle. However, there are um, the psoas major and minor. Um, there's the iliacus, the rectus femoris, uh, TFL plays a little bit in there. So there's more muscles than just the psoas in there that play, but the psoas are, is definitely like the biggest one. So now that we've done those quad stretches, we're gonna put that position to work a little bit better. So we did one leg at a time. Now we're gonna do both. So this is a hero's pose. So we're gonna tuck both feet underneath and we're going to lie on back and we're, once again, we're gonna fire the glutes to come up. Now, what we're really doing is working on huge plantar flexion through the ankle joint, which is great. Um, not many people take the time to be in plantar flexion. 
And then we're getting that big quad stretch, um, really strong muscles that are gonna help um, release some tension, especially down in the vastus muscles, more near the knee joint, take some of the tension off of the kneecap by stretching these as well. But we gotta flex those glute muscles in the back to help facilitate a better stretch. Once again, if you need help in this position, yoga blocks, those things back behind me can be really helpful. You can support it underneath your bottom. You can put your elbows on them. Um, and if you can't lean back, you can always come up into this position as well. So great on that one, feeling definitely a little more loosened up in the quads. We're gonna work into a um, three-way ankle mobility. So I'm gonna put my foot actually up on a raised surface to do this. And you can do this standing and or um, you can do this kneeling as I'm doing, doesn't really matter, you can go up on the bench and do it. But three-way ankle mobility essentially is going to be like we're shooting for 11 o'clock, noon, one o'clock. So we're going slightly out and forward, coming back, we're going straight over, and then we're going slightly the other way. So what we're really working at the ankle is flexion, but also flexion through um, inversion and also eversion of the ankle, which is the tilt of the ankle. We're just working it through. And you can pan back and forth. You can go, you know, 11 o'clock, noon, one o'clock, noon, 11 o'clock, whatever you wanna kinda do, but you wanna hit all these positions roughly three to four times. And of course, you know, knee over toe. What a great position, right? Who would have thought that that would have been good for our knees as well? Only an old study that doesn't have any validity would say that it wasn't good for our knees and somehow that went into the zeitgeist, but knees over toes definitely is okay. And knees over toes is definitely something that all coaches and trainers that know what the heck they're talking about utilize. So um, it's not some new revolution. So switch it up. <laughs> a little, little rant for you there. But you know, the, the whole thing was basically, uh, you know, squatting with your knees over your toes is bad for your knees. But um, that was a very small group of people that that study was done on a long, long time ago. And it definitely doesn't hold, as I said, doesn't hold any validity, especially towards movement patterns and stuff that the body is able to do. So I also want to point out in this position how the knee slightly actually twists as well, especially when we come into um, the E version with the flexion right here. We actually get a little bit of a twist in the knee. That's a good thing. Your knee has a little bit of rotation in it. So we don't want to not do that. We think that the knee is just a, uh, a hinge joint where it just goes in and out, but it actually has the ability to rotate slightly. And that's good because we have a muscle in the back of the knee called the popliteal that actually aids in deceleration of knee twisting. And when we lock it up and we don't let it go through ranges of motion, that popliteal muscle doesn't get any strain, which means it doesn't get any strength. So the stronger that is back there, the better. So that's how this knee can push inwards and also forwards. It's because it actually has that little bit of rotation, which is a great thing. So after we pop through that, we are going to go into another great one, which is a 90-90 hip axle. Now, comparatively to a traditional, just like 90-90 hip switch, where we're just switching our hips, we're actually gonna activate and move through this range. So, for those that don't know, 90-90 is a shin box position, so we create a box. We also got 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, all the way through the system here. And we can support back behind us, and we can also use a yoga block to help support if that's more comfortable. If you don't have yoga blocks, um, hooks are fine as well. We're gonna do five to six on each leg here. Now this is what this looks like. So I'm gonna get nice and tall. And I'm actually gonna place both of my hands on my front leg and then I'm going to pull my other leg up and through into external rotation at the hip and then back into internal rotation. So now I'm activating the rotator muscles at the hip 
which is fantastic. These are very underutilized muscles, um, especially internal rotation, comparatively to external rotation. We don't do very much internal. So the pecnineus muscle in the inside of the, um, the hip in the quad there is one of the main internal rotators of our hip. Also the glute med plays a little bit into that, believe it or not. So we uh, utilize those muscles a little bit differently rather than just, you know, like doing a sideways abduction kicks and all that junk that can be done, which has its place. But if we want to improve mobility, definitely more helpful here. Let me just swivel it over to the other side, which means we're gonna put our hands forward on that leg. Now I'm putting my hand on my ankle than one on the floor. That's just a little more comfortable for me, but um, the idea is to be essentially facing perpendicular to that quad that you're gonna be moving through the hip capsule. And you might lean slightly in and out with this too. That's okay. We wanna try our best to stay as stable as possible through the torso which is why we're supporting ourselves with the hands. This is my good side. You can tell this moves much easier. So after you're about four to five on each side, feel free to hit more. That's totally fine. It's only going to be more helpful if you go through um, more range of motion in those hips. And like I said, the reason why we're focusing on hips is because the hips play with the knees, the knees play with the ankles, vice versa. So. We don't want to separate the body up into pieces because the body is a holistic system. Everything plays with it, um, with its counterparts and everything like that. So when we start to split it up, like, oh, we're working only on knees, we forget that the ankles play into the knees and we forget that the hips play into the knee and vice versa on both ends. So um, that's why this um, flow looks a little bit different than just like, oh, we're just focused on knees and ankles. Well. A lot of it had to do with the hips as well. So hopefully that was helpful. Feel free to go through it again. It's only going to be more beneficial the more that you do this. Uh, it's also a great warm up or warm up to your warm up to help improve the mobility of the hips, the ankles, and the knees, and hopefully prevent injuries moving forward for you. As always, if you like this, please like and subscribe and shoot me comments below of what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.